New exclusive CNN reporting this morning about pro-Trump lawyer Kenneth Chesbro and his whereabouts, where he was at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th during the insurrection. He was the alleged architect behind the plan to submit a fraudulent slate of electors after Trump lost the 2020 race. He was among 19 people, including Trump, indicted this week on racketeering and other charges in Georgia's election subversion case. Our senior crime and justice correspondent, Jerome Porcupaz, has this exclusive reporting. Where was he? Well, according to a CNN investigation, what we've found is that he was outside the doors of the Capitol on January 6th, surrounded by the mob of protesters, but also significantly following around a leading voice of the Stop the Steal movement and conspiracy theorist, Alex Jones. And now this morning, the big question, what was he doing there? He is one of the alleged co-conspirators in two cases against Donald Trump for 2020 election interference. Now for the first time, CNN has identified Kenneth Chesbro outside the Capitol on January 6th, shortly before a mob stormed the east side of the building. He followed right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones for about an hour. Chesbro is the alleged architect of a plot to use fake electors to stop the certification of Joe Biden's win. This week, he was indicted, along with Trump and 17 others in Georgia. He's also been identified as an unindicted co-conspirator in the federal case against the former president. CNN projects Joseph R. Biden Jr. is elected the 46th president of the United States. In the days after the November 2020 election, Chesbro wrote a memo to a lawyer for Donald Trump. It's among the earliest known documents outlining the legal strategy Trump would allegedly try to use. His memo focuses on January 6 as the hard deadline with ultimate significance to determine the validity of electoral votes. Emails obtained by the January 6 committee show Chesbro later suggesting to the Trump campaign that the fear of, quote, wild chaos on that day could provoke the Supreme Court to take action. Go to the White House! At the same time, Alex Jones was helping pay for and plan the January 6 rally, urging his massive audience to gather in Washington, D.C. The night before Trump's rally, Jones would warn of a coming battle. This will be their Waterloo. This will be their destruction. We fight. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. When the January 6th committee asked if Chesbro was in Washington the first week of January, Chesbro pleaded the fifth. Let's go Trump! But there is no question, he was there. CNN has analyzed publicly available photos and videos from that day which show his movements. In the hours before the insurrection, he was with Alex Jones and his entourage a short distance from the Capitol. Chesbro is here wearing a red Trump 2020 hat. As lawmakers prepare to certify the results of the election inside the building, Chesbro follows Alex Jones and a crowd of protesters as they walk towards the Capitol. Chesbro has his phone out, seemingly recording Jones's every move. Let's march around to the other side. And let's not fight the police and get the system what they want. As Jones was leading a crowd to the east side of the Capitol, the west side was breached and rioters poured in. At one point, while Chesper was on Capitol grounds, he appears to show something on his phone to a member of Jones's security team. Then Jones and Chesper climbed the Capitol steps. There is no indication Chesbro entered the Capitol building or engaged in violence. But shortly after Chesbro and Jones left the steps on the east side, the Capitol was breached again as the mob poured into the doors. In all, more than 2,000 rioters would enter the building, vandalizing and looting, attempting to prevent a joint session of Congress from counting the Electoral College votes. The House committee investigating January 6 would eventually call it the final step in Donald Trump's plan to try and overturn the election, a plan that started in earnest with Kenneth Chesbro. And we're hearing from Kenneth Chesbro's attorney who told us last night, he spoke to uh, my colleague Andrew Kaczynski and M. Steck, who've been doing all the reporting on this, saying that they're going to allow the legal process to play out and that they're declining to issue any public comment at this time. And that sort of has been Chesborough's thing, right? He hasn't really wanted to talk about it when he was before the January 6th committee. Uh, he pleaded the fifth. He claimed attorney-client privilege for most of the interview. Uh, so he is one of the people who is going to have to surrender in Georgia 
next week by Friday. Yeah, that's great reporting by K-File team. Shimon, stay with us as well. I want to bring in Ali Honig to talk about the legal implications here. When you watch that piece, when you know Kenneth Chesbrough's role uh, both in the federal and state cases, whether unindicted or indicted, right. uh, what's your take on what you just saw? Well, this is a big problem for Kenneth Chesbrough, and here's why. His defense, and I think a defense we're going to hear from a lot of the players here, is this was just lawyering. You can't criminalize lawyering because the main thing up until now that we knew that Kenneth Chesbrough was doing was writing these memos suggesting ways they could try to disrupt the electoral count. But he's not just some lawyer sitting in an ivory tower thinking of, you know, novel legal theories. Now we see he's literally at ground level. And I think that raises real questions about his participation. The other important thing to know about Kenneth Chesbrough, Shimon and I were discussing, this guy is the underrated player here. Everyone's very focused on the other lawyers, Rudy Giuliani, Eastman. on John Eastman, on Sidney Powell. If you read the indictment, he's the driving force. Yeah. He's the one who's really coordinating with not just the top players, but the local players, too. Especially on the fake electors, right? Yeah. That's what the... The Wisconsin committee. memo. The Wisconsin was, yeah. memo. But also, he's the driving force behind this idea that you can bring in these fake electors. The whole thing what's really interesting with him is that he's about sort of creating chaos. Let delay, delay, He delay. wrote as much. Right. And it's sort of, let's just create this chaos, this uncertainty, mm -hmm. and hopefully we can delay, 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 and somehow the former president could get more votes, and somehow this can all work in his favor. That's what it's so much of this is about. But it's also significant because he won't admit that he had conversations with Donald Trump. They asked him in the committee uh, hearing when he was questioned, did you meet? with Donald Trump? What were the discussions? Did you have any meetings with him? And he said, I'll take in the fifth, attorney-client privilege. So clearly they know a lot of information. It's very clear the special counsel has a lot of information about him. But as Ellie said, no one really knew anything about him. And now that his name has surfaced out there and you start digging in, you really learn just how much he was behind all of this. Can I just add one thing to that? We, we hear a lot about the fake elector scheme, but if you look at both indictments, Fulton County and DOJ, their allegation is not that the intent here was to trick people. Everybody knew Joe Biden. You could, you could go to CNN. I mean, everybody knew Joe Biden won. They weren't trying to say Donald Trump actually won. They were trying to create chaos. They figured if we can get someone to sign on to this somehow or just cause delay or cause confusion, that'll give us the opening we need. That's actually the charging theory in these indictments. But does, yeah. I want to just ask Chris, quickly a question. Does this in any way help the former president? Can he say, well, look, this lawyer was sort of the one telling me you know, here, this was allowed and I can do this, you know, are they going to try to use this as kind of a defense? Oh, 100%. It's called the advice of counsel, meaning my lawyers told me this was fine. Yeah. But the problem is they're all charged as co-conspirators, meaning they were all in on the crime together. Yeah, all right. Uh, Shimon, great reporting.